I do this message in obedience to the Lord Jesus Christ of Nazareth, my Lord and my Savior. I'm here out of obedience and to follow what the Holy Spirit wants me to talk about. So as I'm sharing this message, I am deeply concerned because the message will reveal something of incredible importance that really has to do with all of us and is not something light. I'd like you to pay attention to the message, to the explanation that comes after and what the Holy Spirit showed me about the chapter 18 of the book of Matthew. We are no doubt very close to the return of the Lord. Now, I do not know the day or the hour, but we do and understand that the time is very, very short. As you all understand from this message, we continue to receive confirmations and understanding, and it's my firm belief that we'll get more and more as we get close. But don't be confused. We don't have time. Time is already past. We're in the last bits of it. This is the time to renew, reestablish, and continue to seek the Lord and his presence. His relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ of Nazareth is the only thing that matters now, not the world, not the concerns of the world, and certainly not sin. So please listen carefully to the message, for it has something important for everybody. And my recommendation is that you get your ministry going, and that means that you share the gospel with as many people as possible. You make those phone calls, and you go and tell people who need to hear about the Word of God and the promise of salvation through the blood of atonement of our Lord Jesus Christ of Nazareth before time is up. This is what we're commanded to do, and to continue in love and support of each other, for which I'm very thankful for all the messages and all the prayers and the blessings that I've been receiving. They are of incredible importance to me, and I'm very grateful, although I do not get to answer most messages. I'm extremely grateful for the continued support from everybody. I will also be teaching an in-person class on the end times here in the Westchester area of New York. So if you're close enough, um, I'm inviting you to join. Send me an email. The link is in the bio. It's a free class and we'll be meeting in person. There is no online version, no Zoom. But if you're here, it's a great opportunity because I will be training and teaching others. I don't think it'll be a big class, but whoever shows up to teach others about the times that we're in. So send me an email, the link is in the bio. So I received two messages, we are, which are combined into the final explanation. The first message I received on February 6, 2023 at 8.52 p.m. And it goes along with this drawing that you can see here, this sketch, which I received at 8.40 p.m. the same day. The message, say, the message says, Right, son, that I love you, and nothing can separate me from you. Now, right, son, that I come quickly. Right, son, that the young man, in parentheses you see, is David, my prophet, my anointed one. David is shepherd, a mighty one who leads my people according to my will. For the seed of the mustard, tree in parentheses, has grown. Now, right, son, I come with power in the clouds for all to see. And then I see a vision of light blue light crystals. The time comes for fire to strike. The pestilence. And I see a vision of wolf's paws. Now, retire, son, I have spoken. I love you, son, Lord Jesus, Yeshua. Amen. The second message I received on February 7, 23, but I erroneously wrote 01 for January 7, 23. So it writes, writes 010723, and you'll see how significant that is. That was an error. Write, son, that I am with you and will never leave you. Fear not. A day come, and that day in parentheses is now, when you will see me in the cloud of glory. Write, son, that I come quickly, and, in parentheses, a door is prepared. Enter in. The time is now, and you will not be left behind, but many will, for disobedience and following the world, which has nothing to offer but death and destruction. 
for narrow is the way and straight is the gate that in parentheses leads to life enter therein by my blood you are saved not a works abide in me son let all know for time is no more whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven i say therefore repent and turn to me for i am the way the truth and the life and no one comes to the father but through me i am at the door son and time is no more warn my people retire now son i love you lord jesus yeshua amen so as i was in the car the other day and i was speaking with my wife and i was running her through some of the ideas about prophecy of course i told her about the 70 weeks of daniel immediately as i said that she brought brought up this revelation by saying that that was why she was constantly being led in the last days prior to that conversation to the uh, gospel where jesus says i say not unto thee until seven times but until 70 times seven this is the matthew 18 22 verse where the Lord responded to Peter, who said in verse 21, then Peter came to him and said, Lord, how often shall my brother sin against me and I forgive him till seven times. In verse 22, Jesus says unto him, I say not unto thee until seven times, but until 70 times seven. In that exact second, the Holy Spirit confirmed that what my wife had seen was a true revelation. That is, the Lord is talking about the 70 times 7, which are the 70 weeks of Daniel. So the Holy Spirit led me immediately to Matthew 18. And as you know, Matthew 18 is a very interesting chapter because there are so many different things happening. First, he talks about the children. And then we go into the section where you should not follow sin. And if your eye makes you sin, you should cut it off. And then he moves on to the idea of forgiveness. And then finally from there, and, and actually prior to that, we talk about witnessing. And then from there, we go into the story of the king that um, forgives the, the, uh, the servant. And then that servant is not forgiving his fellow servant. And so there's so many things happening at once. The Holy Spirit said, go ahead and write out every single number that you see, that is not the verses, but every single time that a number is mentioned. So one or one or two, then 199, etc. For example, the 99 sheep are also mentioned in the chapter. So I went ahead and the first thing I did, just like the Holy Spirit pointed out, is I wrote down in order every single number that it's mentioned in the full Matthew 18, 18 chapter. Much to my surprise, but not shocked, for I know how amazing God is. I just was mind blown by the revelation of the sequence of numbers. So I'm going to walk you through them. So because we know we're talking about the 70 weeks of Daniel or 70 times 7, then we know that somehow in here there is a story or revelation about the 70th week or the tribulation which also includes the rapture and the second coming so when we list the numbers and we go one and one i immediately knew that we were talking about the 11th shemitah cycle so i had just watched prior to that a video by the end time dream and vision channel which is called, called the true shemitah seven year cycle begins in march 11th cycle, Daniel 70th week. So I knew that exactly this 11th meant the 11th Shemitah cycle. So as we move through the numbers, we ne next have 2 and 2. This meant immediately I knew that we were talking about 22. Why? And we'll know that in a minute because immediately after we have, it's, it's still again from the end time dream and vision video, there's a mention of Exodus 12, and of course, in verse 1, 
it's mentioned what? Exodus 12, it's chapter 12 of Exodus, as 51 verses, just like the 51 weeks. So it represents a year. In fact, he says it. First year, first month, 12 months, 52 verses, which means 51 weeks, 51 verses, 51 weeks, Exodus 12, 1, tells us that we are going to start counting the first month as Abib or Nisan, which is what we've been talking about so far, which means that 22 is still going to run in God's and the Hebrew original calendar all the way into March. Now, we also know that we're talking about the tribulation because the verses where the one and one and then two and two are mentioned, and those are verses five through eight, really talk about offend. And we know from the previous message that the Lord told us that there is a time of offense. Now, of course, I didn't know until now what that meant. And he's talking about that there will be a man by which the offense will come that it better never really have been born. Who is this man? This man is the Antichrist. And as we move down into verse 8 and then 9, we're seeing that the Lord is inviting to cut off and eliminate a hand or feet rather than entering into hell with both. It's talking about this AI agenda that will provide prosthetic in addition, artificial additions to the body and transform it to a level where it will be any longer recognizable with the DNA changed and the body changed. And so the Lord is saying, as this 11th Shemitah cycle starts, and it will start in 22, you will be entering to a season where all of these artificial intelligence will be added on to you. You're going to have to get rid of it or never take it on in order for you to enter into heaven. So because we're talking about the tribulation, the next verse is going to go into, which is verse 12, where he talks about the 99 sheep. But he says in verse 12, I'll think you if a man have a hundred sheep and one of them be gone, does he not leave the 99 and goes into the mountains and seeks the one which goes astray? Notice this is a hundred to one or one to a hundred. That's 1%. It's talking about 1%. The 1% of the flock is what he's going after to get. This is very important because we're going to see in a minute. Immediately after, we talk about the 99. And 99 is mentioned twice in a sequence. Because it says, How think you if a man has a hundred sheep and one of them gone astray? Does he not leave the 99? There it goes, first one. And goes into the mountains and seeks that which is gone astray. And if so be that he find it, verily he say unto you, he rejoices more, okay, careful with that, rejoices more of that sheep, the one over the, the 99, that of the 99 which were not astray. So 99 repeated twice. Now immediately the Holy Spirit led me to multiply that. And that gives us 9801. So 99 times 99 is 9801. This is an incredible thing. Why? Because I knew immediately that they meant 98, 1998 to 2001. Why so? Because that will mark the exact 2000 years from the Lord's birth. Why is that critical? Because the, in order to calculate the two days properly, we're going to need to make sure that we know when the birth was. So 98, which is right across the millennium, if you can see, switches from 1 to 2, 1,000 to 2,000, calculates exactly to 3 BC. Why? Because look, 98, 3 BC, 99, 2 BC, 2,000 has to be 1 BC, not 0, for 2001 to be 1 AD. This confirms the 3 BC, which we have known for a few weeks now, which then lines the whole calendar up correctly. Now we're going to go back, go back into the video when we spoke about the full calendar, and you can watch the whole series if you want. But he tells us this 3 BC to 31 AD. That's at 32 and a half years. 
that the Lord lived. Why is that important? Because 32 is the opposite of 23. You can see it there. And then 3, 3 plus 1 is 4. 3 plus 4 is 7. So this is a setup that is so perfect to launch us into the actual two days, which will be from 31 AD to 2031 slash 32. 2031 AD, which is our time, from which we're going to take off the seven years tribulation to land in 2023, 2024. That's the window that we have been talking about. 